Chapter 9. Esper. Excerpt from the Citizens' Assembly on the Raising of Taxes on the Gridlock. Report number 41. Testimony from Randomly Selected Citizen, Ms. Violet Ali. It depends. I think the goal should be towards more transparency, you know? How do we even trust that random numbers are truly random? It's so esoteric. It's why many citizens don't even want to get involved with buying a car in the gridlock. It's scary. The blockchain, the Randau, councils, a complex mess, jargon. Make it simpler and more people will use it and taxes will increase. From Esper's car to the corner bakery, there were 2,041 lights that hung from the concrete over the gridlock. It annoyed Esper. It was really close to 2048, which would have made it a binary multiple. He wondered whether he should get a new car a few meters away so that it would complete the multiple. He shook the thought away when he entered the corner bakery, sitting down next to paintings that stood on the floor. Saga was ready. Her laptop and notes sprawled out over the plastic table. He grinned. Exploring systems was the favorite part of hacking. Rulo, caught unawares, rushed towards the back of the kitchen to fetch his notebook. Esper started without him. The Council of Seven. That's where we need to start. Wait, start where? Rulo asked, joining them. The Council of Seven, Saga answered, peering over her round glasses. The Council of what? Rulo asked. Saga sighed. Look, Rulo, this part is for Esper and I to try to figure out first. If we need hardware advice or contacts, we'll let you know. Esper chimed in. We'll need your help, just not yet. We'll tell you all you need to know. We're not trying to exclude you, but we'll be faster if we can focus through the cryptography on our own. Rulo bowed and muttered something under his breath. What did you say? Saga asked. Nothing, he said as he stood. I'll go get some curries for lunch. He left, forcing a smile. A long while went past as Esper and Saga drew diagrams, read code, and devised various strategies for manipulating the public car markets. It was past lunch when Rulo came back with the curries. Rulo, we need you. You were gone for so long, Saga said. I know, I'm sorry, Rulo said, putting down the curries on the table. I got distracted by some dogs. I followed a group of them to see where they went. Wouldn't you believe it? There's actually a cave protected by a canary kid that has like a lot of dogs in there from like almost pure breeds. I don't know where that comes from. Rulo, Saga interrupted. We need your help. Wait, more than just bringing the curries? Yes, Esper answered. Oh, awesome. Okay, just hang on. Bowls for the curry. One sec. Rulo ran to the back of the kitchen and came back to set down bowls on the table and one on the floor. Esper shuffled closer in his seat, peering around the table. He looked back at Saga, hoping that someone would explain what was happening. It's for Piccolo, Saga responded. But he's gone, Esper asked, even more confused now. We put out a bowl for him with some rice and boiled chicken, in case he ever comes back, Saga answered. Rulo smiled and nodded at them as he finished dishing. So, what's up? Rulo asked, looking at the drawings and diagrams in front of him as he blew over a spoonful of curry. You still have your mech, yes? The one you aren't using anymore? Esper asked. Yes, sure. Why, though? We need one. Why? He said, chomping the hot curry. Hot, sorry, <clears throat> what am I getting myself into here? Saga moved closer with her laptop. Okay, we will explain how we got here and why we need your mech. She ate some curry as she explained. So, the public car markets, right? It runs on a distributed blockchain system that's maintained by the Council of Seven. Seven institutions that run servers that work together to process the transactions on the open market. This way, right, there is no central authority that might front run or screw people over. Cool? Got that? Every few seconds, all the transactions are bundled up and sorted randomly using a combined random number to deter high-frequency traders. All the council members work together to generate this combined random number. It's a cryptographic scheme called Randau. If you can manipulate this combined random number, you can manipulate the order of transactions to your benefit. Wait, even I know that biasing the random number generator is almost impossible. Well, I said the same to Esper, but he made a few good points. 
That which seems impenetrable is usually vulnerable. So in this Randau, every few seconds, seven institutions produce their own random numbers by themselves. They do this by submitting their random numbers as a hash. And then, what's a hash? Rulo asked. Think of it as a unique fingerprint that conceals the random number. Unless you've seen the fingerprint before, you can't know what random number it represents. They all throw the fingerprints into a pot. After a while, each member of the Council of Seven reveals their random number that corresponds to their submitted fingerprint. All of the numbers are then combined into a final random number that is used to order the transactions that occurred in those few seconds. No one, thus, knows the final order until the transactions are cleared. Then, it starts all over again, generating a new combined random number for the next group of transactions. This Randau scheme works well because, in order to manipulate this random number, all the seven institutions need to collude to cheat. Is that what the diagram is for? Rulo asked, pointing to the seven dots with lines among them. Yes, and we believe we have a way to manipulate it without being noticed. Wait, really? This is really cool. If you know all the seven random numbers behind the fingerprints, you can combine them into the final random number before each member reveals it. We can thus know the order of transactions before everyone else does. So we need to look into any of the seven institutions and hack one of them? Rulo asked. Yes and no, close, Saga said. We hope to get some clues about their hardware and software setups. We want to determine in some form if we can manipulate either the production of these random numbers or see them before it is revealed. Does that make sense? I think so, Rulo said, taking a bite out of his curry. How much of this do I need to know or remember? Where do I come in now? Saga looked down at the papers. It's not that important for you to remember. Here's where you come in. The seven institutions comprising the Council of Seven are the Hope Runner's Office, City Parliament, the Mech Institute, Citizens Assembly of Gridlock, University of Gridlock, Public Car Market's Office, and the Open Sorcerers for Randomness. She looked up again at Rulo. We got in contact with Palma. His parents work at the Mech Institute, and through him, we can get into the servers of one of the council members. He wants to help, but only if we help him. He wants to help Flora with the championship, and she likely needs a mech. Thus, we get a mech that we give to Palma so that he can give it to Flora so that he can help us hack his parents. Everyone wins. Make sense? Flora will use my mech for the championship or training? She is competing, right? Yes, she is competing. The deadline for declining is passed, and yes, a training mech probably. Your bucket probably won't hold in the championship, but it's something. Pommel will just be happy that he can help Flora. Rulo frowned, sat back, crossed his arms. No, there's no way we will use my mech. Is this about your dog? Saga asked. Doesn't matter. Rulo, for crying out loud! Let go of the damn dog! Why, let me speak. Okay, fine. I can get us a mech. Just not my mech. Esper sighed. We don't have the money to buy or rent a mech. Rulo tilted his head in confusion. That's just bullshit, Esper. You have money, but don't worry, I'll get one. Without money. It's just that we might need money. What does that mean? Saga asked. Contacts. They owe me. But it's important that they think it's just something to repay me, not actually a mech being used by a championship runner. Esper sighed into his palm. Fine, there is money available. Rulo smiled and stuck out his tongue at his sister. You are ridiculous, she said as she started packing away the notes. Who the hell even is this contact? Mother Mech. Who? Let me just say that. Wait, how do the fancy people speak? She is an acquired taste. 